Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Ahab Plays Football Manager 2020. This is my Deportivo save. I'm Ahab, thanks for joining me. Um, we have a huge match coming up here in this episode. Uh, and it's really huge with regards to the table. But uh, let's do a little bit of review here from the last episode. Last episode we played Atletico and we had a goal bonanza. Six goals, 3-3 three, three draw. Uh, after that, we played Malaga at home for a 1-1 draw. That was frustrating. And then we played Bilbao, where we came back from 2-0 down to draw 2-0, 2-2, excuse me. Um, a bit of an exciting match, but a bit frustrating because we didn't, didn't do anything. And then we had the second half of our uh, Spanish Cup tie against Valencia. And we technically, we lost because they had the 3-1 and the first go. Um, and that was uh, that was frustrating because we went up one nothing, then we went up 2 nothing, and then they went up, they got that one goal, so then it was a draw. And I was fighting for that one goal, fighting for that one goal, and we just could not create anything against Valencia. And I'm going back and I'm looking at their um, their uh, their formation and how they played and some of their players and um, well, you know, Spanish Cup would have been nice, but it didn't... I don't know if there's a reward or any money with regards to the Spanish Cup. So I felt, you know, I'm okay with the loss, because that allows me to completely focus on uh, the First Division, which, I mean, honestly, it's really not that big of a deal at the moment. But... I forgot how many times we played Valencia in the past month. Um, so here's the match from last episode with Atletico. We had played Valencia just before then. Then we played Valencia, uh, let's see, it's the 8th of March in this game. We played them five days ago. And then now we have the First Division second half game of uh, Deportivo versus Valencia. So we played away in the first one uh, up here in January, and we played the second one here. So, interesting. Big game, because let's have a look at the table. So Barcelona and Real Madrid are starting to pull away from the rest of the pack. You can see Barcelona's got a handle lead on Madrid. Madrid has a handle lead on the rest of us. And by the rest of us, I mean Coruña, Atletico, Hispalis, Bilbao, Valencia, and even Celta Vigo is uh, still kind of in the running there for these last three um, Champions League spots and the Europa League spots. Um, but let's see here. If we win this match, that puts us uh, five points up on Atletico and Real Espalas, and six points above Bilbao, and uh, eight points above Valencia. And that kind of solidifies our hold on third place for the foreseeable game week future. If we lose, um, we kind of stay in place, but then we're only two points, and that's barely a game. Uh, if we draw, that's a full game ahead of Atletico and his So that's a, an okay cushion, but then that's a... Oh, no, that's not a three-way tie. But if Valencia wins, going back to their winning, if we lose scenario, that's a three-way tie uh, with Madrid having the goal differential there, I think. But that's not the way Spain does it. They do how the results compare between the teams first and then goal differential, which is interesting. So we'll, we'll see how that comes out. But... Also, another thing to note here is um, I have updated my Football Manager 2020 to be the beta patch that was released on uh, in the first first or second week of January here um, that addresses a lot of the complaints that players have had with the match engine, which uh, over the tops and through balls being all over the place, tons of one-on-ones and getting nothing from them, um, and defenders doing some screwy things. Now... Um, I have used a couple of my other saves that I'm not doing any recordings on to see what the differences are, uh, and it, they're they're quite apparent. Um, over the tops and through balls are not eliminated because that's just that's not the way soccer is, um, but they're certainly a lot less than they used to happen. Uh, so that is interesting. That might be interesting for the way Karunia plays with the four four two setup. Um, there's also the issue with 1v1s, which happens significantly less 
uh, in terms of occurrence. And I'm not sure how that will come, uh, how that will affect any goals, because I know that tons of people were con were complaining that one too many one v ones are happening between uh, offensive players and goalies, uh, and then two the other complaint was no goals. Where I, I don't really know how to comment on that because there's plenty of times like I support Liverpool. Uh, the match this past weekend was Liverpool versus Manchester United at Anfield, and Liverpool had some great 1v1 opportunities and, and they got no goals from them. Um, Salah had the last opportunity in a 1v1, or almost a 1v1, and he got the, the, the second goal in the 94th minute, um, which was it was pretty amazing to watch. But still, it was, uh, you know, it, it was crazy how many opportunities, uh, how, how many sitters that Liverpool didn't score in that match. So I don't know how far off the 1v1 situation was, with regard to scoring, but with regard to how many occurred, I can definitely agree they were uh, significantly more than happened in real life. But uh, what else is going on? So Valencia has a very interesting uh, formation that they play. Uh, it is a Four four one one, but it's more of like a four two two one one. Then we'll take a look here at the Spanish Cup one. I think they have the same. Uh, analysis is it? Not entirely sure exactly what I'm looking for here, but. Uh, here we go. Formations. It's in stats. Yeah, so they play four at the back, two defensive midfielders, um, two wide, and then an AMC and a striker. Now, Rafinha and Rodrigo teamed up really well in the past two matches against Valencia, and they've, they've really just hammered us, unfortunately. Um, but th this is space right here that I think that can be exploited. And I think what I need to do is make a change uh, for this particular match. So what I'm going to do here is swap Traver and Cartabia. Cartabia, I'm going to personalize this position and set it to inverted winger on... I'm going to say support. No. All right. Well, this one too. Personalized. Inverted winger. No, I'll do gets further, further forward. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do we'll do inverted winger attack and see how that goes. Um, and there's some more instructions I'm going to put in place here. I'll show you all. Uh, right after the break, after I get the match loaded up and ready. And I'm getting right into it because it is just a huge match. And um, I'm a little nervous because I'm not sure how this my formation, even with this inverted winger change, with them cutting on the inside to exploit that extra space in the middle, um, I'm not sure how this is going to go with the new match engine. Um, to be fair, we weren't really doing much against them in the first place in the, in the old match engine, but we'll see what happens here. So back in a minute. All right, and we're back. You've joined us in the boot room, the uh, Corona locker room here, and we're about to get our pep talk done with here. Uh, I know many of you would anxious to avenge what happened the last time we played. Get out there and express yourselves. And uh, I think they much more will come from you guys. I believe you got what it takes. And that team talk, go into the tunnel, because undoubtedly there's going to be some questions. Uh, I think we'll be fine in other circumstances, but Ladropolis has been injured, so I've got to leave him out. Yep, okay, so they're running the same formation here with this chunk of open space in the midfield. Um, let's see how things go. Oh, it's raining. I did not notice that. did not know that Francis Coquelin had ended up at Valencia. That's, uh, for those of you who might not know the name, he uh, broke into the Arsenal first team under Wenger uh, 
he was on loan and they had a injury crisis at Arsenal and Coquelin came in and just completely redefined how to play defensive midfielder in uh, in the Premier League. This is a couple of years ago and then all of a sudden something happened with Arsenal and, and Coquelin had to move on. All right, a nice shot and Uzoho doesn't even have to move. He just picks it right up. Cartavia playing on the right side this time and uh, skips ahead. Ooh, that was a ball in a very dangerous position, but Klesson is able to get it. Oh, what happened there? I'm not sure what happened there, but we were able to pick up on a mistake by their right side or their left side. All right, we're looking pretty good here. Simon pushing up, and bad head by Traver. That's all right, Traver. We know that you can't head the ball worth anything. <laughs> all right, Rafina on a free kick. Over the top by Mangala. I mean, that's a pretty solid team that Valencia has there. I mean, it, it's kind of surprising, in my opinion, that they uh, aren't doing better in the table this season. Then again, we did just lose to them technically two times in a row, and that was a solid shot, but just kind of pulled. All right, we're in 18 minutes, so I'm going to give the guys an old demand more here. And you can see we haven't really had uh, any balls over the top. Um, technically, I guess that one to Edmondson. Oh, wow. What the heck was that? Oh, man, I just felt a chill go up my spine. I mean, I'll take the corner over the goal immediately, but still. <laughs> but yeah, no, no real balls over the top there. Um, you know, we could get tons of, of balls over the top, and... Uh, chances, uh, shots, but rarely were we getting shots on target. Bartson is sitting deep there after that throw in. Oh no, that's Marchetti. Another cross into Traver, and he gets a head on it, but again, a poor header. Another free kick in the same area. Nice, uh, nice block by Traver there. Throws himself in front of the shot, and we get. Uh, oh, Ballista's offside, so they're pulling it back. All right, I completely forgot to put in the changes that I wanted to put in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell Marchetti. Um, I want Marchetti to get further forward and move into channels. Okay, and then in Edmondson, I'm actually going to tell him to roam. Uh, because Ingvartsen is already moving to channels. I don't want to do that. And since he's holding up the ball, that could throw them into a little bit of chaos. So we'll, we'll see how that goes there. And Rodrigo is way offside. All right. I'm, I'm, so far, I'm, I'm content. Sneaks in across. I'm not sure how he did that. Cartabi's offside. Yep. Oh my goodness. Traver puts in a... That is like a classic Traver shot right there. He sits right at the line and just hammers one in. So David Simon crosses it over to Marchetti, who lays it off to Traver, who one-shots it into the lower corner. I will take that all day long. Ahab's doing a happy jig here on the other side of the microphone. Don't mind me if you hear anything. All right, so that was Traver with the goal, Marchetti with the assist. And... Uh, Way we go here. Oh, something else I learned. Something I used to do in older versions of Football Manager, um, with the shouts was after we score a goal or my team scores a goal, I would do concentrate. Uh, and it seems that in the latest version of the match engine, that needs to come come back. It's just something I found on my own. I'm still experimenting with it. 
All right, Simon was almost offside there. I'm very surprised that he wasn't. But uh, I'm liking what we're seeing. I, I think we're, we're hitting their mentality a little bit. They're not understanding what's going on because we've changed the game up on them. Um, you know, they were expecting the old Karunia 4-4-2, and uh, it's not the old Karunia 4-4-2. And this is different than the 4-2-4 that I had earlier in the season that I never used. Uh, if Cartabia gets this... Oh, no, he's not offside. All right. All right. Oh, Ingvartsen. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Ruiz is way offside. <laughs> he was offside by, like, five yards. You don't need any of VAR to look at that one. All right, let's give another shout here. Oh, we can't. Oh, well. Next time we can, I'll tell them to step it up, lads. Nice pass to Cartabi, who picks it up and bounces it off. Cartavia couldn't go after that until after the defender went for it, because that would have been offsides. Ooh, what a save. Condogby at the top of the box with a rocket similar to Traver. Rizoho was able to save it. And I'm playing on comprehensive here because, again, I'm, we're in the new match engine, and I'm I'm trying to watch everything I can here to see what's going on. All right, this is perfect. I'm really liking everything I'm seeing here. A little bit of roaming from from Edmondson, and uh, the inverted wingers I think are really helping us here. Now I could be talking too early here, but Cartabia stealing the ball back, even though he has low work rate, and a nice header from Ingvartsen forcing the save on uh, by Tillerson. Traver with the cross. Edmondson roaming way out. I'm liking it. All right. Oh, Cartabia trying to dribble up the line there. <laughs> Cocolon with a solid defensive header there. Simone picks up the ball and brings it up the line. Simone to Madran. Madran over to Marchetti. Marchetti into Ingvartsen. Cartabia trying to do a little bit of something. Gets the space and shanks it. Six shots to two. So this is the other big thing uh, in this match engine is... So... One of the complaints, and, and if you recall, if you watched any Football Manager 2020 uh, streamer, YouTuber, what have you, shots have been off the wall nuts, like 25, 35 shots in a game, sometimes with 15 shots on target, and the, and the game will still be 2-0. So the, the game is definitely, it's still very dynamic. I think the match engine is a big improvement over FM19, but it's not limited to the uh, through balls and balls over the top. Uh, there's still some things they need to polish out, I think, but that that's few and far between in my half. Um, I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to say this is a great opportunity, uh, which they don't really take to. Uh -oh. Although they are getting motivated by me telling them that I believe in them. So end that team talk. Let's take a quick look at the tactics here. Um, so Marchetti's moving up. I'm thinking um, I don't know what I'm thinking here. I guess what I'm I'm concerned about is well let's come out strong and then I'll change some things around at the second half. We start out with the ball in the second half, Marchetti back to Chumi. Oh that's the other thing. Soma has a uh, sprained knee ligament. So my starting ball-playing defender 
is out. So I've rotated a bit. Chumi is now on this is now starting as my ball playing defender. I brought Sadiq in as the normal center defender. Um, Gala open on the wide. Kondogbia is sitting at the top of the box where he is just brutal. Do not give him any space, guys. Rafina sitting back. Kokolin pushing way up. All right, forces the save. Uzoho is able to get across and make that save, thankfully. But, um... All right, Uzoho pushes right out and grabs that cross, uh, that corner. And it looks like they've adjusted. So... All right, nobody's there for that. Zoho being uh, ballsy, drops the ball at his feet for some dribbling. and Here we go. A little ball into space. Travers able to pick it up. Nice cross in, and Edmondson puts the header over. Uh, not a sky ball like they used to be. That's another thing folks are saying is better in this patch is the headers aren't ridiculously like out to Jupiter in the stands. They, uh, they look a little bit more, even though most of them are still misses. They're at least somewhat in the direction of whatever target the header is supposed to go to. All right, Marchetti is doing well in, with that instruction of pushing up. Uh, Ingvartsen. Nice ball into space. Travers able to latch onto it. Ooh. To the side netting. But that's that's movement that I want to see there. Anybody that needs to work, come out. No. Ooh. Zoho is forced to make another save there. All right, so before we continue here, this is what I wanted to, this is what I was contemplating here. I'm going to change these to support because I don't want them pushing up as far yet. And go. Edmondson at the top of the half picks up the ball and is uh, dispossessed by Gaia. Gaia? Yeah, Gaia. All right, we've got a lot of defenders to pass through here. All right, pass back into space to Madron, who dribbles it up. David Simone back to Madron, over to Simone, who's pushing up nicely. Oh, see, we didn't take advantage. Three players had moved on Madron over here, and Simone had enough chance to get a nice cross in, and he didn't, didn't take advantage of the space that he had. All right, Rodrigo's got the ball, and he's fast, very fast. But uh, the rest of his team can't quite keep up with him. Travers able to get a defensive header in. Jesus Navas. Okay, yeah, pushes up. They're playing really narrow on the attack, although their players are getting wider. Marchetti with the interception gets the ball out to Edmondson, who is holding it up nicely, and puts it back to Simone. All right, Travers starting to get tired out on the left side there. So this is a perfect time for Juan Luis Valer. Uh, for those of you who didn't see the last time, he's a very promising young lad, 18 years old, very strong right foot, loves the left side, s crazy work rate, teamwork not so good, uh, but he's he's coming up, and I've been using him since uh, Aguera Akeche got bought off me by uh, Bilbao, and he's even though his stats are still need work, he's been putting in some solid performances. So um, anybody else need a rest here? Marchetti is playing well. Um, no, I like the way, I like the rest of the way, the way the rest of this is being played. So, okay, yeah, with the free kick in this time, swings it in. And Zoho is able to grab it. Uh, theoretically, assistant says they're going more attacking, so we could benefit off of that. Wow. Oh, Valor straight just offside. Um, all 
Dren puts the ball in the space. Valor picks up the ball, a little tease. Oh, is unable to angle it into the top corner. That's something I'm going to have to teach him, how to place his shots. I don't know if he has a technique for it, though. I don't think he has the finishing, so we might not be able to do that with him. But that was that would be a perfect space. Marchetti with the interception. Times the ball well. No offsides there. Ruiz, Marchetti. Into Ingvartsen, who passes it to Valer. Marchetti. Dran into space. And Karuni get the corner. Much, much, much better playing from Karunia than the previous matches. I'm very happy with this against uh, Valencia. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to kind of copy this into my third slot and get rid of one of the other ones I've been toying with because this is. I think this is a strong difference. It's. Uh, it, it looks the same, but it plays very differently than the other four four two I've got going. Edmondson gets a nice header in, and but it's over. All right, so I'm actually going to do a little shenanigan here. I want to change it up even more. So Edmondson is still the target man. Ingvartsen, I'm going to put on attack. And you're still, no, you're not roaming. Edmondson, I'm going to put on support, and I'm going to tell him to roam. Because I want... I, that's actually switching both of those strikers onto sides where they kind of have a better go with... Oh, wait, i got to do some subs here. Holy moly. Ahab. Oh, you're looking at too many things. You're not paying attention to the time. So Shibasaki in for Marchetti. Marchetti had a solid match. Uh, Cartabia is tired on the wing. Louise and Simone are doing okay for 10 minutes left. So the question is... What do I do here? Sadiq and Chumi are doing okay. Cartabia is... Let me see what Kevin LaCruz is actually good at. He's a good winger. He is not a good inverted winger. He's not horrible, but he prefers to play winger. All right, so what we'll do for him is we'll say, Eller's going to move on the inside. I'm going to put you at a winger support. Oh. Oh, that's right, because I had personalized those positions for the folks that were in there. Um, nope, we want to put this back to wide midfielder support, and then we're going to personalize it just for this time to winger support. I'm, I'm really changing things up here to keep Valencia guessing is really what I'm doing here. So Shibasaki is the sub, Lacruz, so reinforcing the midfield basically, because the defense looks, they look okay. So give these guys a good old pep talk to it once. It is what it is. Really should have made these subs earlier, but it is what it is. Oh, I just froze there. Condogby has got a foot and a half. I mean, he can really slam a ball into the net. Rodrigo's offside. How is he not offside? And that's, are you telling me? Oh, it's going to be a penalty. Oh my god, this is going to be a penalty. And this is going to be the match. Come on, Uzoho. I'm counting on you. Oh, Parejo? Who's this? Yes! 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 Uzoho comes up big. I was so worried there was going to be Rafina. Rafina was like guaranteed goal. And who the heck is Parejo? I've never heard of that name before on their team. Maybe he's a sub? Hold on. I need to, I need to look at this. He 
He is a sub. Danny Parejo. Oh. Oh, okay. I have heard of him. Yeah. I'm not sure why he took the penalty. <laughs> 16 to 18? Oh my goodness, and he missed? So that is something that supposedly should have been fixed, is um, penalty taking has been supposedly... Oh wow, what a horrible clearance. All right, come on, guys. You demand more here. This is just getting absurd. Oh, Jason is offside. So, as I was saying about penalties, uh, folks have been complaining that too many penalties are being missed. Oh, there's the first ball, real ball over the top. And uh, Ingvartsen was unable to convert. But we get the corner, and we're out of our half with two and a half minutes left. Or, excuse me, three, three minutes, 45 seconds. I'll come back to penalties in a second here. All right. Confident playing from the Corunia players here. Simone puts a ball up into space. La Cruz is not nearly fast enough to get there. But that's all right. Oh, and Shibasaki bends it like Beckham, except it goes out. Oh, man. All right, here we go. In the last minute, they changed to a 4-1-2. Two, three, and this is a formation they were playing um, in the Spanish Cup, and they hammered us with Jason again offside. Love it, love it. All right, blow, blow the whistle, ref. Blow the whistle, ref. Four minutes. There we go. Game's over. I will take a win. One nothing. I'll take it. 11 shots, 2 on target, one of them's the goal. 15 fouls. Man, we're playing a little dirty. 43% possession. That's a little low in my book. I, I don't think I've had teams... I don't historically play that low possession in, in soccer. Um, wow. You're in football manager, I should say. But what I was saying about penalties was... A lot of folks on the on the SI forums have been complaining about penalties not being made and that they feel that the conversion rate is unnaturally low. Um, I don't. I, I can't really comment on that. I, I know that a lot more penalties have been getting saved in the past couple of years than they had been historically. Um, but hey, you know what? I, I'll take that penalty save against uh, Parejo here, who had just a. I mean, look at these stats. Look at his stats. Cultured midfielder. I would love to have anybody with his stats. Oh, well. Let's head into the dressing room and uh, let me see here. No one really performed poorly, so I'm going to say that's a good win, boys. Well done. And uh, Traver coming up Millhouse. Very happy with your performance tonight. And the team talk. And head on out. So that solidifies our position in third by five points. Um, with Atletico below us, Real Spalas, and Atletico Bilbao, and Valencia all below us in the table. Um, so let's see, 27 games. So 11 games left in the season. And... Um, Barcelona and Madrid will have their places locked up here in the next couple of game weeks. And hopefully we can continue at least gaining points. I, I'm, I'm really hoping we can avoid some more losses uh, and get some draws. I would love to just keep getting points. But um, <sighs> tough, tough schedule coming up here. We have an international break uh, at the end of March, which is kind of nice. We get, uh, I'm going to put probably plop a friendly down in there between Madrid and Hispalis. Madrid, I'm going to chalk that up to probably being a loss. So that's points lost. Girona, I'm thinking we're going to be able to handle them. Um, Hispalis should be a tough game. They, they've been, they're getting back on their, 
their uh, their bike, so to speak. Then Espanol, Sebastian, Alaves. We have another derby coming up here in, in May, towards the end. And then uh, a tough May with Levante and Barcelona as the second to last match. Um, oof. So the next match will probably be Hispalis, uh, because they're in the top of the table with us. And um, thanks, everyone, for joining me. If, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I hope to see you next time. Take care of yourselves. See ya.